So this kind of photography is called afocal photography. What I'm actually doing is just holding my mobile phone up to the eyepiece of the telescope. The telescope is obviously on track because it's a Dubsonian mount. So I'm just hand holding it here and taking video and my hand shaking a bit in the cold. This is the most simplest type of photography you can do for your telescope. Of course you can buy mounts to hold uh, your mobile phone over the eyepiece or hold your DSLR camera. Or you can go the, the way of the modern webcam design or get CCD cameras whatever way you prefer. But this is the most simplest and I quite enjoy it. It's a lovely quiet night, early springtime, technically the 1st of March. And there's a couple of comets I want to observe during March and April. In the evening, evening and morning sky, new comets, so I look forward to trying to hunt those down, so I'm hoping for clear skies, good weather. My interest in astronomy really is factored around the uh, deep sky and the solar system astronomy. By deep sky I mean I enjoy observing deep sky objects, better known as faint fuzzies, those distant star clusters and galaxies and nebulae, planetary nebulae, uh, globular star clusters, so forth. And of course comets and asteroids. I'm very interested in the comet and asteroid impact threat to planet Earth. I have a really big interest in that for years and really fascinated by the whole impact phenomena. And of course if you don't believe the Earth has ever been hit by a comet or asteroid, all you have to do is look at the Moon, which I'm doing right now. Every one of those craters on the Moon, large and small, are caused by comet and asteroid impacts over the Earth and Moon's uh, life in the past four and a half billion years in the start of the solar system formation. The moon is a record of the impacts on our region of space. But the earth is bigger, so naturally it would have more craters. But you don't see many of them because of uh, weather conditions and erosion and mountain building and t t t uh, plate tectonics. Earth conceals a lot of her craters. There have been quite a few discovered. Of course, the most famous is the Chicxulub crater. It was an ocean impact discovered by uh, a mining company in prospecting under the ocean for, for oil. And they discovered the crater and was identified as uh, extraterrestrial in nature. It's now to believe to be the progenitor impact crater of the KT event, the Cretaceous tertiary event, which wiped out the dinosaurs 65 million years ago. It was either a comet or an asteroid. A lot of the modern evidence suggests um, because of the iridium deposition put down, it was probably an asteroid, but some people still feel it was a comet. But either way, the Earth and the Moon are related in this respect. The Earth has no atmosphere, there's no erosion on it. It only gets bombarded by cosmic radiation. So its craters are there for millennia, for millions of years, even billions of years. So you can see that at any time through binoculars or telescope looking at the craters, this is literally like observing the, or reading the history book of the solar system, and also a prediction of the future. As a human race, we need to discover all the Earth-threatening uh, comets and asteroids, so we don't get hit in the future, or always we're in serious trouble. So that's pretty a big part of astronomy at the minute, and an area that I'm really fascinated by and have been for many years. Hence why I'm particularly fascinated by comets. You think a comet, if you think there's no such thing as a threat from outer space, the odds are remote of a large impact hitting us. You're right. However, comets can take us by surprise. Look at Comet Neowise back in July 2020. It was discovered three months before its closest approach to Earth. I had that comet been on a collision course with Earth, we'd only have three months notice. That's not long enough to arrange some kind of uh, interceptor mission and try to mitigate the threat or blow it up or move it out of the way. It's just too short a notice. So we would have been in serious trouble. The nucleus is five kilometers in diameter. So that's half the size of the diameter of the uh, dinosaur killer. So in effect, we'd have been looking at a, a global killer type event if that had hit us. So at best, you may have two or three years notice if it's discovered far out, but you can get surprises from comets around the sun and just like Neowise did. So the threat is definitely there, 
and we need to do something about it. But if you have an interest in this, okay, I'm losing it here in the telescope now. There it is with the naked eye. If you have an interest in the subject, look at a moon map and study all the craters, get to learn some of the names, and uh, it's quite a fascinating, fascinating area of uh, astronomy you can do from your backyard. But anyway, it's getting cold. I've had a good observing session here. I'm very pleased with the telescope and I uh, look forward to those darker nights.